for six long years of the German occupation of Poland, 1939 through 1945. The Nazis took control of most of the restaurants, luxury stores, hotels, and cultural institutions, making them accessible to Germans only. Poles, Jews, and anyone who was not German was not permitted to enter. Nur für Deutsche, or for Germans only plaques, became ubiquitous all over Nazi-occupied Poland, replacing We Are Open signs in restaurants, fancy stores and theaters. Germans were the pure uber-race people, and their supremacy was not to be questioned. Those Nazi signs reminding the Polish population that they are not only not welcome, but strictly forbidden from countless places in their own country, were close relatives of the white-only signs present for decades all over the southern part of our country during the Jim Crow times. State and local legislators separated people of color from whites in schools, housing, jobs, public transport, and gathering places. White supremacy required that all non-whites do not use the same water fountains, that they do not go to the same schools or sit in front of the bus as the whites do. <clears throat> At this time, we would like to remind you that only Roman Catholics in good standing are allowed to receive Holy Communion in our church. Everyone else is encouraged to come forward with hands crossed on your chest and receive a blessing. Have you ever been to a Catholic wedding or funeral mass when the priest made such an awkward announcement right before communion? I have, too many times. Such announcements create two categories of people. Those who deserve the special treatment of Holy Communion and those who should be grateful by a blessing from the Father. Religions have always experienced such temptations of exclusivity and supremacy. Theological knee-jerk reaction to encountering the other has almost always been to separate and to exclude. Many religions and spiritual movements have struggled for decades, if not centuries, to liberate themselves from such dangerous temptations, while some still struggle with similar questions today. Who deserves to be ordained? Who gets to be married in our church? Who is allowed to receive the bread and the wine? Who gets to go to heaven? In the Gospel passage assigned for this Sunday, we see that early Christians also struggled with this temptation. Was Jesus sent only to the people of Israel? Was his grace and salvation reserved for the few? The fact that Matthew makes Jesus decline the Canaanite woman request is a testimony to that struggle. Matthew makes Jesus and that unknown woman 
verbalize the process that the first generation of Christians was working through. Lucky for us, they opted against the exclusive option, and the woman from today's gospel story gets her miracle, even though she was the other. Germans only, white only, men only, legal residents only, straight only, Christians only. All these onlys result from our fragile insecurity and imaginary supremacy. In Christ, there is no more other, as his grace and love cause us to recognize God's face in all, without any exceptions. Amen. Thank you for watching. I do hope you enjoy my weekly reflections. Please click on the like symbol below and make sure that you subscribe to this YouTube channel. If you can afford to make a donation of any amount, you may do so by clicking on the links to PayPal or Venmo in the description of this video. Thank you and God bless.